In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at the components that are available in Active Directory Certificate Services. Before you start installing Active Directory Certificate Services in your organization, it is worth taking the time to understand what components are available. This video will help to make the right decisions on which servers to install which components of Active Directory Certificate Services. When deciding which components you want to install and where, there are two main factors that you need to consider. First, where the user or device is located that is going to be using certificate services. Is that user or device on a local network or connecting via a wide area network? The next point to consider is what type of user or device is accessing certificate services. The main consideration to think about is does the user or device have domain access? If it does not, additional components may need to be deployed in order to provide a bridge between Active Directory and the user or device requiring the certificate. These additional components provide the means for users and devices to obtain and use certificates when they are not members of the domain. Active Directory Certificate Services consists of six different components. These components can be installed on any server. The components may require other components to work. However, these components do not need to be installed on the same server. I will quickly go through each of the components available before looking at each component in more detail. Even though there are six components, they can be grouped into four areas. The first one is Certificate Authority, or CA. A Certificate Authority is responsible for creating certificates. They form the distribution point for certificates, if you will. The next component is Online Responder. Before a certificate is used, a CA or Online Responder needs to confirm the certificate is valid. Having a system like this allows a certificate to be cancelled or, in certificate terminology, revoked after it has been issued. The next component, Network Device Enrollment Service, provide certificates to devices on the network, like routers and switches. This allows these devices to use certificates even though they are not part of the domain. The last three components I have grouped under the one heading of Web Enrollment. The first two, Certificate Enrollment Web Service and Certificate Enrollment Policy Web Service, work together to provide web enrollment services. This essentially means that non-domain members, including users and computers in a different forest, can obtain certificates using the web protocol. The last component, Certification Authority Web Enrollment, provides a web interface that users can access to obtain certificates. I will now have a closer look at these components to see how you would use these and some of the decisions that need to be made on where to deploy these components on your network. The first component that I will look at is the Certificate Authority component. A Certificate Authority is also known as a CA. This is the main component of Active Directory Certificate Services. This component is responsible for creating certificates that will be used by users, computers, and devices on the network. In order to start using Certificate Services on your network, you need to install a root CA. As we will see in later videos, the root CA is the top of the hierarchy of the network. There can also be other CAs below the root CA, known as subordinate CAs. Later in the course, we will look at how these subordinate CAs work and also how to install a subordinate CA. It is important that when you install the root CA, you take care which settings you choose. Once the settings have been decided, these settings will have an effect on the certificates that are issued from the subordinate CAs. You may also see the term CA used with third-party companies, which you can purchase certificates from. It is important to remember that certificates are a standard, and Active Directory Certificate Services is just Microsoft's implementation of this standard. The next component that I will look at is the Online Responder. The online responder's job is to check if a certificate is valid. To understand how an online responder works, consider what happens when you do not have an online responder. In this example, a certificate authority has issued a certificate to a web server. It is later realized this was a mistake 
and the certificate needs to be cancelled. Or to put it in certificate terminology, the certificate needs to be revoked. So when this certificate is presented to a client computer, how does the client know this certificate is not to be used? In order to do this, the Certificate Authority creates a Certificate Revocation List, or CRL. The CRL needs to be downloaded to any location that needs to check to see if the certificate is valid. There are two problems with this approach. The CRL must contain a list of all the certificates that have been revoked. If there are a lot of certificates that have been revoked, this list can become quite large. The second problem is the client will need access to the Certificate Authority in order to obtain the CRL. In some cases, this may not be ideal. This is where the online responder can be used. The online responder's job is to check if a certificate is valid. Rather than the client keeping a list of revoked certificates, it simply asks the online responder if the certificate is valid or not. The online responder has a connection back to the certificate authority so it can contact the CA as required, meaning it can download the CRL rather than the client having to. This means the client does not need a direct connection back to the certificate authority. The advantage of an online responder is that it can be installed on a server local to the client. In a lot of cases, this is a better option than installing a certificate authority local to the client. The next advantage is since the online responder is simply supplying a yes or no answer if the certificate is valid, its response is always the same size. It does not vary like the CRL does. The next component that I want to look at is the Network Device Enrollment Service. This component issues certificates to network devices on the network. It should be remembered that the certificates are created by the Certificate Authority. What occurs is the Network Device Enrollment Service provides the bridge between the CA and the device requiring the certificate. It does this by using simple certificate enrollment protocol. Any hardware devices that are on your network that support this protocol will be able to obtain certificates from the Network Device Enrollment Service. The advantage of this component is that the device does not need to have an Active Directory account in order to obtain a certificate. It only needs to support the simple certificate enrollment protocol. The last three components that I will look at all have to do with web enrollment, so I have grouped them together. The first one, Certificate Enrollment Web Service, allows clients to obtain certificates using the HTTP protocol. This means that a client could obtain a certificate using the web service that is not a member of the domain. This is useful if you have a business partner that needs to access certificates, but you do not want to give them direct access to the certificate authority. It should be remembered that this means certificates are obtained using the HTT protocol. This component does not provide a web interface. The next component, Certificate Enrollment Policy Web Service, works hand-in-hand -hand with Certificate Enrollment Web Service. It essentially provides policy information to clients using HTTP. Policy information gives the client information about the certificates used in the organization. The last component, Certification Authority Web Enrollment, this component provides a simple web interface that can be used to access certificates. For example, using the web interface, a user could request a certificate to be generated on the CA. The point to remember that is different between this component and the last two components is this component essentially provides a web page for a user to access. The last two components only use the HTT protocol to communicate with the client. I hope this video has helped you understand the core components of the Active Directory Certificate Services. In the upcoming videos, I will have a closer look at these components and how to install and configure them to meet the needs of your organization. Thanks for watching and see you next time.